Hey, how are you, everybody? It is Dee and Renee. So um, it is game time again. And last week's recipes, Dee, were spectacular. Everybody was so excited. And um, so who is your team? <laughs> My team? My team? I'm... I'm I'm a baseball girl, not a football girl. And then I'm a hockey girl before I'm a football girl. So, and my team is not in the playoffs. Um, oh. Yeah, I just kind of mindlessly listen in the background because my boys watch every game regardless of who's playing and, and who's not. So um, I really tried to love football, everybody. I really did. and. When my boys were little and they played in the Pee Wee Football League, I cheered. I cheered aimlessly because I, <laughs> I, I really didn't invest in learning what the game was all about. So that's but, okay. Know, that's okay. Going to support. <laughs> so, you know, I'm Go Blue Dodgers. They're there still in the playoffs. We're, we, we still got a chance. So, um, yeah. I, All right, so D D has been so creative this week. If you are just coming on to the broadcast, would you do us a favor and number one, hit the like or love button, uh, whichever you prefer. And then would you please click share and share this out. So the more audience we have, the bigger our show grows and the more time and availability we and energy we can put into more and more recipes so we would love it if you guys would share this out there and if you are an ideal protein clinic please share with all of your fans and followers and clinic dieters and um, of course we love your comments so if you have something that you are wishing to have d recreate she is, um, you know, such a mind and and uh, all about creativity and, and creating a lifestyle that you can sustain when you're not only losing weight, but these all transfer into maintenance. Mm -hmm. All right, Dee, so let's see what we have here this week. Um, everything looks absolutely delicious and um, I know that we have seen this uh, recipe before and um, this is the apple sage bread but I think the the cool thing is is that we can actually you know make some low carb bread and and that seems to be something that you know I hear a lot dieters say I miss bread so yeah tell us about this so I um, threw apple sage bread into this week's recipes again, just because it is such a versatile vehicle. So of course in Canada, we just had Thanksgiving. So there was a lot of leftover turkey. And so we can talk about soup till the cows come home, but we can also talk about leftover turkey sammies. And you know, Walden Farms has a cranberry jam. I know it's not the real thing, but it's pretty good on this sandwich page with the apple sage bread. And the really neat thing about this, the base recipe of the apple sage bread. So for something like Thanksgiving, you can season it with poultry seasoning and it takes on, you know, that it paired with leftover turkey, it takes on the perfect taste, but you could leave seasoning out and have a mildly sweet bread. It has great texture. It uses a plain pancake and an oatmeal. So whether you are on ideal protein or maybe you're using another program that has those similar kind of packets, you could give it a whirl. Um, and again, in maintenance, we don't have to say no to low carb breads and uh, wraps and things like that. If we have a good vehicle, if we have good ingredients to make them, then we can still enjoy them. And this bread is truly one that I've made in a variety of different ways um, for different purposes. And it really serves a great purpose. I don't get inflammation. I don't get bloating. I don't get gassy. I don't get swollen fingers the next day when I um, indulge in a little bit of low carb bread. So for me, it's a, it's a, it was a win. And so I, I did present it again in this week's recipes, just an example of how you can use it. 
Yeah, ab absolutely. And, and I love just uh, talking about inflammation and, mm -hmm. and um, the, the ingredients that keep inflammation away. Um, so, you know, let's, let's touch on that for a minute, just kind of some of the things that um, reactions that people have as, as they are trying new things and, and what have you to um, tell us a little bit about inflammation and, and how foods play a part in that. Sure. So when we are in an unhealthy state and sometimes we don't even realize, you know, how unhealthy we really are because some, sometimes we have a general feeling of unwellness and we're not sure where that unwellness comes from. Sometimes very hard to find the particulars, but when you do a program and I'm just going to use IP as an example, because that's something I'm very familiar with. We take away a lot of your sugars. We take away a lot of your carbs. We do take end up taking away a lot of gluten. We take away a lot of factors that can cause a lot of inflammation in your body. Now, not everybody suffers acute inflammation, but all of those ingredients do cause inflammation in the body, whether you're aware of it or not. So once we take it out and we actually can really, we can start to identify once we reintroduce foods, what sits well within our bodies and what does not. Um, and, you know, we've had to actually send some clients, um, refer them to allergy testing, food allergy testing. Um, <clears throat> I know myself, um, I have a sensitivity to a vegetable that I never dreamed I would, ha would have had. And it's a perfectly healthy vegetable and it's a mushroom. So I love the taste of mushrooms, but they absolutely cause me um, gastro distress. And I don't think I would have known that if, if I would have not X'd out other things out of my diet. So it's not always about standout um, items. You know, there's a lot of talk about about gluten and there is one side that feels it's a very fad um, item. I 100% disagree um, just based on my own experience and based on the experience of the clients that we do see in our clinic. We do see um, maybe not true allergies, but we do see sensitivities to it and we do see very real inflammation and the side effects of those things. So even when we're in a healthy maintenance and lifestyle, we're going to always recommend that you reintroduce food slowly and one item at a time so that you can really see how it makes you feel and how it makes your body feel as well. Absolutely. So um, those are those are great tips. And and if you have any kind of autoimmune um, disorder, you'll know uh, you'll feel the inflammation. I, I certainly do. I have Graves disease um, and I do have some limes and, and have been treated for mercury poisoning. So um, a variety of things that have caused um, little things to go haywire. And I, I will feel that. So, yes, it's so nice to have uh, to clean up our gut system and a lot of this does that. All right, let's get back to game time. So if you guys are just coming onto this broadcast, please hit the like or heart button and uh, tell us where you're from, uh, tell us what phase you're in, and uh, tell us what recipes you really love from last week. So if you tried any of last week's recipes, let us know what you really loved. So um, Karen Westman says, um, Hi. Oh, she's a she's a native from L.A. So go Dodgers. Um, yeah, Karen, we are going to be sharing Melissa's recipe today, yeah. um, along with some uh, recipes that uh, D kind of uh, D, D included that with the jicama, which I love. We uh, if you haven't tried the ideal protein um, uh, mangosteen or tangerine water enhancers, they're super versatile. They make the water go down faster. They help you with your electrolytes. Um, so definitely try those. And and a, one little tiny packet goes a long ways. I use it in like three different bottles of water. So um, yeah, totally cool. Okay. So D, what do we have here? This chaoti chutney. I love. So at the end of this, we're going to see the big charcuterie board that uh, D created. But these are all the little ingredients that are going to be on that board. So um, tell us about this chutney. 
So I made chutney. chutney. So chutney and antipastos and salsas, um, of course, things that are in jars. You know, I think of them and they're in a jar and they're pre-made and we don't have control of what's in them. And so lots of times when we read the ingredients on them, it's a no and back on the shelf they go. But we can recreate them in our own kitchens and really control the what goes in and what doesn't go into them and still end up with some great replacements um, for the original recipe. So this would be a replacement for an apple chutney. And so, um, you know, the, the thing about chutneys is they're almost like a jam. So they're just really filled with tons and tons of sugar. So um, you know, tell us a little bit about how, how the chayote, um, you know, really the, the fiber and, and all the ingredients of the chayote and what a difference that would make from, from actually using apples and sugar. So the great thing about chayote is it's so mild that it's really going to take on the flavors of everything you infuse with it. In the recipe that I did make for this apple chutney or chayote chutney, sorry, there is one. <laughs> there is one sweetener per cup of veggies, um, but I did it a few ways. And original recipes call for a boatload of sugar, so I reduced it down to one sweetener per cup of vegetables. I did use ideal proteins maple syrup because you get such a generous amount of sweetener. Um, in that serving and it worked as a perfect vehicle um the great the really neat thing about chutney is you know we, i use some fresh ginger i use some chili use nutmeg use a lot of different spices and they all infuse really nicely so my only point when you're making the chayote chutney is the chayote takes a little bit longer to cook down so you might have to add just a little bit of water until your chayote gets tender enough um, to be to be the chutney texture. So just have a little bit of patience and don't burn the bottom of your pan. So you just need a few extra minutes for a chayote chutney, but awesome spread on the apple seed bread. So yummy. So um, you see little bits of the apple sage bread in the background that we talked about earlier, and that becomes a great that that's going to be that's my mock crackers um, for this charcuterie board. And sometimes you do see um, bread. Sometimes you do see crackers on those boards. So I made mini loaves and sliced them really thin and it's like the perfect pairing for that chayote chutney. Yeah. So if you uh, watch Dee's live video from her um, in construction kitchen area, you will see uh, that you'll see the loaves of bread actually as they come out of the oven, which is, is, they look so delish. All righty. Um, so if you guys are just coming on here, tell us where you're from. Tell us what you tried already from the uh, part one uh, tailgate recipes. I know there were several people that said they were uh, taste testing and, and really enjoying them. So yeah. this looks really, really uh, delish and um, interesting. What do we got here, Dee? So that is jicama diced into matchstick sizes. And this is a spinoff. So Melissa made, um, she likes sweet and tangy pickles. And so she, her and her kids had seen Kool-Aid pickles somewhere. So they sweetened pickles with Kool-Aid. And she's like, well, we're not using Kool-Aid. That's way too much sugar, but we have this awesome mango steam. So let's try the mango steam and and see if it works. And so we, we are going to see that one too, but I thought, what the heck, if it works in pickles, it is gonna work in jicama. Because jicama is so porous. It's 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 so it's it's full of water, it's full of fiber, um, but it's so porous. And so for those of you who love jicama sweet, and I know that the jury is out on whether you have it sweet or savory, um, because definitely in our clinic, the dieters, it's it's you could drive down the middle some really love their chili and lime spice with it and others love their apple or their um, syrup and cinnamon um, with them. And so I thought, what the heck, I'm just gonna try it. Um, if it doesn't work, no worries. Um, so, and I'm, so I'm really sorry that I didn't do a tangerine batch at the same time because how fun would that be in the same bowl or on the same plate? So, Absolutely. If, yeah, so if you're having a sweet craving 
I totally wreck or, or if you know you're a person who has sweet cravings and is looking for um, that little bit, the great thing about the sweeteners is it's a true freebie. You don't have to count tangerine or mangosteen in your sweetener allowance per day. And they, and again, a little goes a long way, like Renee said, and you um, cannot digest <laughs> the carbs from jicama. Um, it has a unique fiber and I'm not going to say it right, the inulin, ogla, but it, we'll talk about that again, but um, which makes it the perfect um, vegetable, not just if you're on a weight reduction program, but in maintenance for diabetics, you get no glycemic index um, reaction from jicama. So a wonderful vehicle um, to, to make things, um, in this case, sweet. So if you have not tried jicama, I would definitely recommend trying it raw um, first before cooking it. And it, it's a great addition on um, fresh salads as well. But yeah, so that's what this is. And it was a, it was a lot of fun. Um, it did get a little bit of eyebrows um, from the other peoples in my house. They're like, mm, what are you doing? <laughs> 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 because it really like how bright it is there that is how bright it is it's very bright <laughs> well that's cool because um that can be on your table in um in in uh, remembrance of breast Camp cancer month um which is the month of october and i know that a lot of us um have friends that that we are are remembering during this time so we will name that the official uh mascot for uh the game time and um you guys can can eat that um one thing i do love about jicama is, is jicama fries for sure all righty so if you guys are online go ahead and tell us where you're from and tell us what you love about these recipes the things you've tried what phase you're in um so here we have another this this looks delish um and uh you know when it comes to pork you do have to be selective about the cuts that you are going to be using so tell us about this d so that is a lovely little piece of pork tenderloin pork tenderloin is my my favorite choice um of pork it is it's very clean but can be very tender. Um, you rarely will find any type of fat marbled through it. You might see a little bit on the outside, um, but it can easily be taken off um, with a knife. So I really, I, I like that ability to remove any excess fat as well. And, you know, if prepared correctly, you, you could fool a lot of people, but they would think that it's chicken. Um, and the really neat thing about um, something like tenderloin is it's usually very economical. And so for something, one of the things that I wanted to talk about for sure on game day food preparation is that a lot of appetizers and fun foods, they're sold in boxes. They are expensive and then the ingredients are, they're, they're not good. They're full of preservatives and MSG and crumbs and fillers. You're not getting pure chicken wings. You're not getting pure shrimp. You're not you know, you're not, you're not getting, um, it, they sound wonderful on the box and then you <laughs> plunk them on a pan to, to bake and you end up with some shriveled little bits that um, are really expensive. And especially if you're, I don't, I don't know about your guys' house, but when I'm feeding game day boys, um, that's not going to, you know, a dozen little bits out of a box isn't going to go anywhere. Um, so I am looking for you know, economical and tasty ways to feed them on game days. And so once an item like this is prepared, you can thinly slice that and have that on a board. And the great thing about it is it's 100% protein. She comes into play. You have to be really careful when you're buying those types of meat. And they're generally very expensive um, to have sliced and on a tray. So this is a really economical way for um, to do a replacement. Yay, yeah, I love it. Love it. Love it. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Fantastic. All righty. Right. So moving on. Um, this is it. You know, my fave, fave, fave is is the rhubarb compote. Mm -hmm. And so D has taken the rhubarb and uh, put a new twist on it here. Mm -hmm. So this would again. Now I'm showing you this because for two reasons. One, I took a look at the finished product and I went, 
whoo, that just does not look very appetizing. And I, and I, and I really feel that way. However, when you taste it, it's fantastic. So um, I thought, well, I'm going to plunk it on the board and I'm just going to show you some of the ingredients that went into making it taste so fantastic. So again, there's our, you know, red peppers and our nutmeg and our um, fresh ginger. You remove the ginger, by the way, but it, the flavor that fresh and ginger infuses into your select vegetables is amazing. And rhubarb is so neat to make. So this is a rhubarb um, chutney. And because rhubarb has a lot more water and is a lot more fibrous, it cooks down really fast into a fantastic um, chutney and tastes even more amazing on day two and three. So I made all my batches into cup batches. And so, you know, start with an even amount. And that way, no matter what it cooks down to, you know, that you're going to divide that in half and then that's a serving or, you know, even just do a cup at a time and then reduce um, the really neat thing about chutneys too is a little spice goes a long way. So usually I love to use and abuse spices. I'm one of those, you know, to taste, spice to taste people. And on this one, I made my first batch and went, whoo, <laughs> okay, <laughs> do over. <laughs> because those red flake pepper flakes and the um, fresh ginger, they, they give a lot of kick. So a little goes a long way. So. I definitely had to do a little bit of tweaking there to get something that pleased my palate, but um, it was a lot of fun and it was, it was worth it. So yeah. Well, so another look, one, yeah. Looks delish. And, mm -hmm. and I'm sure on that fabulous apple sage bread, it is wonderful. It is delicious. All right. So if, if you're coming onto this uh, broadcast and you would like the recipes from today's show, all you have to do is type in the word recipe and you will get the ebook sent to you. There'll be a link that'll come to you in Facebook Messenger. So um, that's all you have to do is type in the word recipe. Okay, D. So moving on to this fantastic sirloin roast. Mm -hmm. So again, with the sirloin roast, same idea as the tenderloin. Um, sirloin tends to be a more economical cut of meat. And a lot of people are sometimes scared to cook things like sirloin because they're not as fatty. You're not getting, you know, the fat infused meat, but that's okay for anybody who's on a weight reduction plan or even in maintenance. Um, you know, we're not scared of fat and maintenance, but still we're going to watch our, our daily intake. And so again, how you spice a sirloin tip roast and the temperature that you cook it, it makes all the difference. And I forgot to mention with the tenderloin, but the same method applies when the temperature reaches the, so for my family, it's the minimum. They like medium rare. They don't like meat cooked all the way through on a roast. They love the pink center. So you need to take it out of the oven before it actually reaches the medium rare on a thermometer because you need to let your meat rest for at least 20 minutes before slicing it. And when you let the meat rest, it still continues to cook a little bit, but all the juices then infuse back through your meat. And so this one as well, I sliced really paper thin. Um, so, you know, you can buy a, you know, a two kilogram little sirloin tip roast for around $10 and feed four people a full eight ounces of, of, of meat per person. So again, a really, you know, a, a great lean cut of meat and one that will get your um, tummy full without breaking the, the bank on the appy boxes. So. Wow. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, a, That's lot a lot of meat. It is. For $10. For $10. Uh -huh. Yeah. They, where, where, where we live, they, they go on sale often and they are often sold in a two pack in Costco. Um, two, two nice size roasts in Costco. They're, they tend to always have that sirloin tip. And I know a little, uh, one more tip on the roast is that I actually like to cut little slits in the top of the meat and actually stuff whole garlic cloves um, right into the meat and you can you can eat them after or you can discard them and that also gives a lovely infused flavor um, through the meat and that is something that I watched my mom do and so I tried with or without to see if it was just really 
do we just do things because we seem to see them being done and we're going through the emotions or does it actually add flavor and it actually adds flavor so i continue to do it oh for sure garlic is garlic is a number one for me i absolutely love it so if you guys are coming on the broadcast all you have to do is type in the word recipe and we will send the recipes to you in your facebook messenger all righty so oh, oh wait one more thing here before we get to the charcuterie board here are the pickles so i love garlic yes and I don't like sweet pickles. I don't like gherkins and those types of things. Um, but a lot of people do. And so when Melissa had done this and her family gobbles them right up, I'm like, so I, I so I said, okay, I'm going to try it. I said, if it works, can I, you know, are you, can I use your recipe on, on one of our presentations? And she said, sure, go for it. So I have to tell you, I still don't totally, my, just me personally, Still don't love that taint, the, the, the sweet pickle, but man, the garlic and spice, so funny. Loved those bits, loved loved them to pieces. But I have to tell you, the flavor of the mangosteen to me is a way nicer tangy flavor than a traditional ger gherkin. So if you like a sweet and tangy pickle, I 100% go for this. And this is exactly how easy this recipe is. Whether you have a full jar of pickle or a small jar of pickles or a half jar of pickle left, <laughs> you throw in your mango steam, shake that jar up, you know, spew the lid, and uh, let it sit in your fridge for 48 or more hours, and boom, you've got sweet and tangy pickles. And again, freebie sweetener. You do not have to count, a sweet, uh, count it as a sweetener. And you all know that pickles are one of my most favorite things. So if you're telling me that you need filler, I'm gonna say, do you like pickles? If you're telling me you have a sweet craving, I'm gonna say, drink some pickle juice, you know, so on and so forth. So for anybody who is having that sweet craving, man, try sweet and tangy pickles. So yeah, so this is uh, again, a creation from uh, Melissa and her fam jam and so, they get a pass they get a pass and they're so pretty <laughs> they are really pretty yeah this that looks delish okay so now we're gonna put it all together on the charcuterie board and i wish we could make this picture a little big yeah there we go there's our board <laughs> nice and big with the chayote chutney in the middle and our pickles and our roast and our cert like our sirloin tip roast and our tenderloin the apple sage bread and then most charcuterie boards also have you know they usually have some nuts on them and so i didn't have any nuts in my house right now but i sure had some ip trail mix and that is a great nut um substitution and so there we have a sweet and savory board um, and it looks like a ton of food. And the really great thing about that board there is you have um, one serving of IP bread, a half a serving of the nuts are pictured, and there's only actually, there is eight ounces in total of meat on that board. So that would be like an entire days, but of course you can divide that up. There's only a half a cup of the chutney in the middle, and there is not even a cup of the pickles on the corner there. So um, imagination and sky is the limit, again, on um, creating your own board, but this was just one of one of the many ways that um, you could present a board. And really, really neat thing is that if you had guests or you had company, you can design, um, everybody can design their own board to suit their own tastes as well. So be a lot of fun. Wow, that looks delish. <laughs> oh, okay. So uh, there were a couple of, of things I would love for you to just say a couple things about, D. Um, let's talk about the water enhancers. So they come in a, a flavor mangosteen, which is kind of like a tart flavor, and then the tangerine, which is a little bit sweeter. Let's talk about why are these unlimited? Um, it actually has to do with the amount of milligrams of the actual sucralose in each tiny packet. Um, so when you, when we talk about sweeteners and you have a packet of Splenda or a serving of Stevia or 
lots of times um, there is fillers in those little packets and you and you don't even know it. Um, but it, again, it is how it responds in the body. We do not metabolize sucralose or to be exact, we metabolize a very, very tiny, tiny amount of it. Um, so the in the packets, there is not enough for us to metabolize them. And so they are a true freebie sweetener. Um, they're very powerful. So just like you were saying before, um, minimally, um, I would use 16 ounces of water per pack and up to 24 ounces of water per pack for my personal taste buds. I do find the tangerine stronger than the mangosteen. And we're actually waiting on IP. Um, they've promised us a lemonade. So I'm, I'm anxiously awaiting that one because I think that that would be a great addition um, to the lineup. So if you're not using them, I would suggest um, trying them. Another reason is they do, they do have a little bit of electrolytes, so that little bit of potassium in them. And so if you are feeling tired, sluggish, muscle fatigue, all those types of things, electrolytes help and hydration helps. So the first line of defense for all of those um, signs and symptoms is going to be water and electrolytes, so or water and salt. But um, if you love the taste of those, they are they're they're a great they're a great vehicle to help get your water in as well. Yeah, but, we, we but, have but a lot too. of uh, clients that use them, so I just want to explain that people always think, oh, can I only have one of these a day, or you know, <laughs> what what's what's the limit on them? So thanks for explaining that. Okay. Um, so game time has been very popular. If you have not seen uh, part one, you gotta look for the video it's from last week on part one it was definitely well watched and well received and all of these look amazing also do you, do you have any uh any more tips for us um that you want to share before we go offline today you know i actually would like some feedback this week from everybody who's watching i'd like to know if you want a week three of more traditional appies or if you want us to roll into something new and something else um so i would like some guidance from everybody um just remember that um tv time um be prepared be ready have your hydration lineup ready to go um don't you know don't don't chance it to somebody else ordering pizza. Have lots of food, you know, prepared. Lots of free unlimited veggies for snacking. Um, if you have pushy friends, push back, um, or you know, pretend you know, get a get one of those fancy wine flasks that y'all see going around, and pretend you're having a bevy in there, or put your mango seen or tangerine into some sparkly water and, you know, make a mocktail, add some lemon or lime wedges, you know, um, go for it. If you did that once in a while, it's okay. It's a way to, to get you through um, big game days. And I know in our house, there's like, there is a game on every night. So um, yeah. that's kind of the other thing we want to touch about. Game day doesn't mean, you know, game day in our house could be every day. Those boys watch some, sort of right now it's baseball it's all baseball and so i mean we can have game day every night in our house so it's that's just not going to work into anybody's maintenance or or dieting plan so just be really proactive be really proactive and, and get your family involved if or you know your significant other or you know if friends are coming over and you know it they're going to cause you trouble then <laughs> you dictate you dictate what um you need or what they can bring or you know and stay strong you know we talk about this all the time if they're going to be insistent on eating something um that you can't have well you just let them bring their own serving size and uh, let them let them have it and uh and uh, you know and the other thing too if you do have like a little pot like gathering and uh there's stuff that you can't eat um, I want to touch on this one because of what it comes into play with every special occasion. Um, and we were talking about it again. I think it's so important. So we're going to say, we're going to use, we're going to change up a little bit and say, what's your birthday? And all your coworkers brought you treats and their, their wives baked you cupcakes and they made dessert and they did this and they did that. And, you know, they did it for you because they're thinking about you. And that's awesome. That's a wonderful gesture. Gesture. 
But now I'm going to tell you, you gather up all those wonderful gestures and you go pay it forward. So you know what? You go take it down to a homeless shelter or you go take it down to where, you know, people are congregating in the park that are less fortunate and, you know, pay them forward um, a treat um, that they don't get once in a while. And so then you can keep the, the wonderful thought thoughtfulness going because um, right now it's not thoughtful for you. Um, um, to put it in your mouth because then you're gonna feel guilty or then you're gonna start over and then <laughs> yeah, exactly so find, and find, find creative ways um, to get to get rid of it <laughs> that's right because it just keeps yeah. going on and on there's never as we we talked about there is never a convenient time nope. to um, do what you're doing nope. so just stay focused and uh, surround yourself with supportive people all right everybody yeah. thank you so much for joining us and thank you d as always for taking the time this week and all your fabulous recipes i know it was thanksgiving week there in canada so um thank you so much and goodbye everybody have a great week